work, a lot of sketches, um, thinking, and really um, trying to understand where this, this group of, of work and where this series was going to go. It's a blending between realism and abstraction, and the work starts to deal with uh, a lot of personal narratives. Drowning in socks. Uh, <laughs> the, one of my key interests for this exhibition was um, setting up a, a location um, for each painting. So the location for this painting is underwater in a stream uh, in the Rocky Mountains. So I mentioned earlier that I'm interested in philosophy. Um, and, and I think as soon as I start telling you that, you might be able to start seeing some of the different elements within the painting, especially the you know, the, the mountain line, the ridge line up there. And then, um, as soon as we start seeing that, we might start thinking, oh, that's a sun. Uh, but I'm playing with space, right? Uh, normally, we think about a sun being much smaller and deeper in space behind the mountains. So a lot of the, a lot of the sort of push and pull um, within the spatial relationships is, is something I'm extremely interested in. And then um, there's a lot of socks in this exhibition. This exhibition is titled Happy Socks. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask right. about is yeah. why okay, socks? So, <laughs> these, socks are, these, are, these are my socks. I see this as a self-portrait. But at the same time, I'm thinking about socks in a, in a more of a metaphor or a, uh, I'm using it as a The impetus for socks came from a, a painting that's not in the show and it was called Sleeping With Socks. And, and the, the most basic entrance into that painting was someone, or I can't sleep with socks. But then I started thinking about, well, I also can't sleep with so there's, there's this anxiety, or if uh, I, I'm continually thinking about what's happening in my studio, or the other issues within my life. So they became this stand-in for the things that we all grapple with, the, the, the stresses, the anxieties, the everyday um, things that uh, people deal with. My name is Ariana Bain. I'm 23 years old. I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm a figurative oil painter. building the frames for these pieces in December and figuring out what the, what the layout for the first couple of paintings, these three behind me over here. And yeah, building the frames first, that was a good step. And then over the, since between January and the beginning of June, I was working on these pretty much all constantly at the same time, like rotating on each of them, all paintings at once. My work, I feel, is I like to characterize personal narrative based, um, autobiographical. I would do lots of paintings. My paintings generally feature myself and very close people in my life, uh, boyfriends, family members, um, best friends of mine. And I feel I have, I make the best work when I'm most, when me and the model are most comfortable with each other, because that's where like the chemistry kind of comes in. And I'm able to document those pieces, those, those bits and those moments, and they eventually become the paintings. I really appreciate when people see my paintings and they see themselves in it. Like it's clearly all, it's, well, it's, it's clearly maybe interesting about us, that I'm in all of them. But when they see and they project their own situation, like, oh, that's like me and my friends. These, that's, that's like me and my bag. That, I love those kind of reactions because that's my life in the, in the long run of schemes is really not much different than anyone else's. <laughs> so I appreciate that no matter what people they see in these pieces, they feel the same like emotions.
This painting is called Sugar, Spice, and Everything Nice. Um, right when I was figuring out what the paintings were going to be and for the space, this was like my first solid idea. I had this idea for this painting as an homage to the Powerpuff Girls. My two closest friends in Milwaukee had the, we all had the same aesthetic, we had the same hair color, <laughs> and it was just too perfect to like miss out. How do you, how do you like go about recreating paintings? Because I like, I can't do that at all. And I, I follow you on Instagram and I saw you were remaking that one. They're beautiful. This, one of this painting and one of the painting of me and Caitlin. And it's odd, like this, this, this whole process of the fellowship, I mean, like, it was just incredible to just be able to be, to be able to do this as a, just out of college. And it was, even though it just happened, it was kind of nostalgic, but when I was nostalgic, I, just, I had so much fun painting with big paintings, and I love the big composition. And I'm working on little copies, trying to figure out how to paint a little. And I already have a standard of how I want to look as a big piece. And if I knew I could do it big, I can make it small. So I'm just trying. It's it's a, I'm able to use these big pieces to like, you know, you can do it. You just gotta try and like use a little brush and like kind of figure out how to make it little. So scale can be sometimes it's hard going big, but also sometimes it's hard making small things too. So I'm, I'm using the big familiar compositions to help me figure out how to do something, a little version of them. Okay, I'm Sarah Grown, I'm 29, and um, I don't work in any particular medium. Uh, if I had to choose an umbrella, it might be social tech. For this particular project, I started making the fountains a couple of years ago, and then uh, collecting the ceramics I've been doing for years, kind of casually on my own as a, it's like a hobby. Um, but this finalized production, maybe six months. I like the alternative. 